Good afternoon, everyone. Icebergs, icebergs, icebergs. 455, that is five times the average. Ships are going south to avoid the ice, just like the Titanic. Coast Guard has a nice rundown from 1900. And when you overlap it with the solar cycles, of course, there's going to be a direct correlation of how much ice at a solar maximum or minimum. When we look, where do these icebergs come from? West Greenland, East Greenland, Elsmere Island. Incredible amounts of new snow and ice on the east. All-time record ice increases since the satellite era began across Greenland. Grand solar minimum tropopause is going to rise across the equator, slamming systems and jet streams across the poles, causing unusual weather like the cyclone that's been there for three weeks, breaking the ice into smaller pieces. And right around Elsmere Island, that channel there, usually the wind goes northeast and the currents go southwest. But right now, the wind is going southwest along with the currents. It's like a bicycle chain just pulling chunks of ice right through that into the currents along Greenland. Right down into the same area where you see the Coast Guard marking off the danger zone for ships. And then add into this, deep waters from the Atlantic rising to the surface, cooling anything 59 north and above. It's like an ice cube in a glass. If it's cold water, your ice cube stays there longer. And please join me for Mini Ice Age Conversations episode number 16, where I talk to Michael Pope about natural building materials. And please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 while you're watching the video. And as I'd reported in the winter of 2014-15, springtime, icebergs washed up on Cape Cod. Now there is about a three year delay in the North Atlantic response to solar forcing. So you could expect that you would see icebergs once again around 2017-18 and here we go. Icebergs disrupt the North Atlantic shipping lanes. 455 icebergs in a single week, that's five times the average. This huge fleet of icebergs. Now in 2014, there were 1,546 icebergs. 2015, 1,165. 2016, 687. Now those of you on the global warming bandwagon, if this were truly because of CO2 and melting because of global temperature increase, the most icebergs should have been around 1998 as that was the previously warmest time. But that didn't happen. There were not an enormous amount of icebergs floating into shipping lanes in the late 1990s, there's another explanation why it's happening. Now these shipping lanes take a direct route straight from southern England, straight over to either Halifax or somewhere in New York, Boston. These ships are now needing to travel about 400 miles south. It's truly an armada, a flotilla of icebergs. And these things are humongous, thousand foot long icebergs, these things are as large or larger than the ones that sank the Titanic. Graphic from the U.S. Coast Guard, anywhere you see a number in that box is how many icebergs are present in that quadrant. Now the possible path of the 1912 iceberg sinking the Titanic is in the exact same place. So with repeating wind patterns, this is about a hundred year cycle. These are some of the smaller icebergs. Now remember an iceberg, you are only seeing 10% of it above the water. The other 90% is below water, along with all that other sea ice that's there as well. And taking a look further back in time, these are all the icebergs that are south of 48 degrees north latitude. Way back in early 1900, there were almost none. And then we come into 1985, 1990, and you start to see that, wow, there seem to be a few more now with the supposed global warming. Yet there were quite a bit in the 1930s as well with the Dust Bowl era. And I'll bring you right here to Dr. Roy Spencer's chart. If you truly believe that it's because of global warming, there should have been more icebergs at other times each time it had warmed. But it just doesn't follow the pattern. There's a different explanation for it. I overlapped here the solar cycles on the regular 11-year solar cycle. And you'll see an exact 100% correlation at solar maximum, 11 year solar minimum, you'll see a spike. Interesting, we're entering a grand solar minimum right now and you would expect more icebergs. Now this just, why are there so many in the last 20 years compared to the last 100? So I started to ask myself, where do these icebergs originate from? Well, the Tidewater Glaciers of West Greenland, 
the East Greenland glaciers, and then also Ellesmere Island, which is far north of Canada with that waterway between Greenland. Now, the Tidewater Glacier area in West Greenland looks exactly like this. These tone glaciers come down, they hit the water, they break off, and they float out something just like this here. You know, they've been studying these not just in Greenland, not just on Iceland, but in other areas as well around Norway, for example. And this is a specific signature of a glacier when it calves off into the water. So that it has a specific footprint on the speed, the time of year with max calving, etc. Just like your fingerprint on your thumb, every one of these is different. And then the report goes on to say, it's not so much about the glacier surface freeze or melt, it's more about the correlation of subsurface water temperatures. Nice view for you here of glaciers advancing. And then we take a look at Greenland itself, all time record ice since the satellite era began. What happened to the melting Greenland? I guess it's not melting any longer because it's gaining so much ice. Nice look at the fjords here coming down. This is where it's gonna calve off. And where is Greenland gaining the most ice right now? The Eastern glaciers. Imagine that. And then we take a look at where the water currents are flowing from. And you might start to match and say, huh, could there be more icebergs breaking off from the eastern areas? And we're talking about this area in blue specifically when we come to these water depths and measurements of temperature. This is the regular 60 year Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. You can see that low point was right around the 1912 Titanic sinking. Again, 1980s. Wait, that same chart matched up with the most icebergs you've ever seen at that time, the 1980s, didn't it? Now that North Atlantic is cooling again, this schematic here is 59 degrees north, and you can see the upwelling of cooler, deep ocean waters from six to 800 meters reaching the surface point at that yellow star that I put there. So if you have an ice cube and you put it in a glass of water, how long will the ice cube last in a glass of warm water? compared to how long will it last in the glass of cool water. You can see why these icebergs are lasting longer and drifting further south. This is an enormous amount of ice that can just keep drifting with the wind in cooler waters. Now what's expected with the grand solar minimum is that there's going to be a bulge of the troposphere at the equatorial band. And as a result, what will happen is there'll be a disturbance at the either Arctic or the Antarctic in stratospheric circulation, just like this. Cyclonic winds have been there for two and a half to three weeks, high pressure system, not normal at all. So intense that it's actually cracking the sea ice, fracturing it in a short period of time. And then Elsmere Island top, right, it's that waterway between Greenland and way Northern Canada up there. The wind pattern generally pushes to the north and the east. Now these glaciers are calving off. They only account for 5% of all the icebergs that come into the Atlantic. But the wind's going the opposite way of the current. The current runs southwest. The wind generally goes northeast. But this year, the wind is going the same direction as the current. So anything breaking off in the Arctic is being pulled like a bicycle chain down through that passage with the wind, with the water currents, and now you got the glaciers calving off on Western Greenland. You got the glaciers calving off on Eastern Greenland being brought in with the wind and the water currents. And these same strong winds are continuing. Even today when I'm doing the video, you can see the green right above Greenland. That is actually pushing the wind directly through that passage there. And once you start to add up all these places around Baffin Island and Nunavut and all this ice just being carried south, we have the perfect condition for the perfect storm. Literally, these icebergs are a once in a hundred year event. The way this semi-permanent high has shifted off of Iceland, the way the Arctic winds are now shifting into a cyclonic pattern, that's not normal. Everything's pushing west, southwest. A lot of these icebergs should be driven on the shore in bays further up around Baffin Island, Nunavut, that area there, but it's just not. And those of you, again, on the IPCC Global Warming Bandwagon, I am going to take you right here and say the warmest temperature I could find around Greenland in these calving areas was minus 13 Celsius. It doesn't melt at that temperature. 
And if you're going further north, you're getting into the minus 30 degrees Celsius. Anywhere in purple is minus 45 or minus 50. So it's not because of actual melting temperatures. There's other forces at play here. This is an explanation of why there's so many icebergs invading our waterways. And it's going to continue like this as the grand solar minimum intensifies. This is just another example of how we're going to have to move our shipping routes, how this is going to cost you more money, and how we're going to start to need to change our lives and our lifestyles because the things you rely on being in the stores, our delivery routes are going to change and they just might not be there any longer. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And staying right on the same theme, Food for Liberty offers an amazing heirloom vegetable seed kit. You're going to have to be able to grow some of your own food to supplement what's going to be lost in the traditional shipping routes or areas of our globe that they're going to have the agriculture affected. Look at the seeds inside the kit here. Enough to grow several acres in a garden. And even if you plant some, you can still save it as a 10-year shelf life the way it's packaged. This is one of your first steps to be more self-sufficient. You can start delving into permaculture and sustainability and find out what's right for you. But gardening is a, an amazing first step to take so you can at least touch it, feel it, and know what you're getting yourself into.